All right, guys, gals, Ted from PVU Farms here. It is Sunday afternoon, January 10th, and we are here in the lean-to on the farm. And basically what we're going to be doing today, a nice little afternoon slash evening project, we are going to be building what we call an escape room for the calves. We've tried this before, and we didn't successfully work at it. It didn't work, let's put it that way. We had something built down across here at this back side of the lean-to. And in my mind, I was going to give the calves this whole lean-to. Well, we had a couple cows that ended up jumping over top of it and basically just busted it. It didn't work out the way according to plan. So, being that we only have seven calves on the farm, this little area here is going to be a 12 by 12 area. So, we're going to use this structural six by six that's holding up the lean to and i just anchored that four by four right there to two purlins in the barn wall so now our next step is going to be take a measurement we're going to cut some diagonal horizontal pardon me horizontal two by fours and we're going to get horizontally ran and then we're going to put spacers in between so a calf can get in and out and then we're going to bed this area up heavily with hay so when we do get this colder weather coming here next week with the snow and stuff like that, hopefully the calves got a good sense that they just want to crawl in here and they'll be nice and warm. They can keep each other warm and just, you know, stay out of the weather. The mothers don't have to worry about them and I don't have to worry about them getting stepped on. So come along, guys. Enjoy the ride. Okay, so as you guys can see what we're doing here, basically, we have gotten a couple horizontal 2x4s, and basically what I made was an L, just for structural strength, and I have face nailing to go for my uprights. Uh, my son right now is marking out a couple of the uprights. We're going to go 48 inches tall. That's plenty enough tall. I even believe that our bigger calves will be able to get into there, hopefully, no problem. And uh, I really think this will work. I don't think we're going to have any problems with any mothers this time. Because I'm going substantially higher than what I was before. Those of you guys can understand kind of what I'm doing here too. Yes, this is a great project to make sure the calves are good. I mean, I, for any of you guys at farm, you know how it is. You worry about your calves, no matter what. Especially this time of year during mud season, cold season, stuff like that. So this is a project that needs to be done here on the farm. But also, my wonderful little 10 year old boy here, uh, he's getting a lot of learning experience out of this. Today is the first day we're teaching him how to use a cordless saw. These guys have not really been introduced yet to electrical carpentry tools. They know how to use the drill and stuff like that. But it's important to teach these kids these kind of life lessons. Uh, to this to me here, 
this is the best bonding fatherly son experience time that I could ever ask for. And I'm pretty proud. And he's doing a hell of a job. Other than he did measure 46 instead of 48. All right, and the other thing you can see we're doing here, there's no really set sizes on anything that we got going on here. So basically, I'm using scraps what's ever left over. So after my 16 footer, if I'm cutting, you know, 12 foot here or there, give or take, I got a four foot piece left. We're making the lumber work for the situation at hand. That's the best thing. Instead of cutting up another full two by four to make exactly what you want, let's use the pieces up that we have. So as you guys can see, this is actually kind of really an easy project. Uh, this doesn't have to look like Taj Mahal. Really nothing that I do here is Taj Mahal. It's kind of a quick fix uh, just to satisfy the situation at hand. And uh, I don't know, I'm pretty happy. I think this is going to work. I got a nice bigger area over there. We left out the last because we laid these out 16 on centers. I think that's plenty enough for these small calves for sure. And possibly some of the other uh, late born calves. I think they'll have no problem getting in there. But we do have a bigger slot for the couple bigger calves that we have. And hopefully that's my plan is these guys will like, this is be like the calf club house. You know what I mean? The frat house. guys there you have it that was the project at hand that was pretty simple i think me and my son were out here for a total of a half an hour probably uh most of the lumber is just lumber that was laying around the farm a lot of these two by fours were was left over from that big pole barn that we did down below this summer uh, a couple old hand uh sawn actual two by fours that were built in this barn that have been repurposed after repurposed after repurpose. I repurpose every lumber that I can possibly here on the farm. So there it is, 12 by 12 stall. We're standing in it right now. Uh, water tub's coming out of there. They don't really need their own water tub, I don't think. And uh, basically we're just gonna bed this down with wood chips. I'll get in the skid steer and try flinging some wood chips up over the edge here. Uh, layer it really thick with some wood chips and uh, throw a little bit of hay in here so they can get cozy up. And uh, there's still plenty of room in here for the big mamas to lay in there. And then I think what we'll do, being my new feeding system, the way it's working, I'm going to stockpile round bales up here so I don't have to go up top as often as I usually do. And I can lay round bales along this whole edge. So when we're getting a southwest wind coming in here, it blocks the wind from coming down low to these guys. These guys should be really warm in some really crappy, shitty weather. So there it is, guys. The calf frat house is done. All right, I'm not trying to do a promotion of Makita tools, but I tell you what, for those of you that do follow the channel and pay attention to the videos, most of the cordless tools that I use here on the farm are Makitas. I am a very big fan of Makita tools. I like the way they last, the batteries, everything about them. I picked up this kit. I got a lot of regular drill driver kits, um, but I don't have a good cordless saw, saw, circular saw, and stuff like that. I picked this kit up during Christmas time at Home Depot for $2.99. And it came with two batteries, charger, impact driver, uh, hammer drill driver. This isn't the blue core, hardcore, Bluetooth, whatever you want to call it, batteries. 
but uh, what else? Flashlight, vacuum, and uh, yeah, sawzall, circular saw, both drills, flashlight, vacuum, $299. You can't go wrong, guys. I didn't have to run a cord out here, carry the big heavy, heavy power tools around. Uh, if you guys got an extra $299 laying around, I highly suggest it's a good investment. Talk about determination, guys. I asked this guy how we're going to get this water tub out of here. This is a secondary water tub that we use to feed the cows with, and basically, it was just been froze. It doesn't get any sun whatsoever. The one that does get sun and the one that they drink of, out of all the time basically does get quite a bit. So it stays thawed out for the most part. This one, they don't touch very often. So there's a lot of ice, and you can see. He's busting it up piece by piece and shoveling it in the bucket. That a boy. Uh, and the other thing I want to say is my two by four right here, on my upright right there, on this little front homemade uh, stop, a, stop cade, we'll call it. I never figured it wide enough either way to get a bucket in between there. So I've always had a hard time trying to get a bale in there or anything like that. Well, that was pain, trying to get the shovel that much wood chips in there and I didn't even think that I could come around the back side of the barn with the bucket and dump over the new uh, enclosure. Here's your sign!